Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review. Now I'm going to do a couple of, of beers. What the heck is this? Dirty again. I'm going to do a couple of beer reviews because this is uh, New Year's Eve or Hogmanay if you're from Scotland and uh, yeah I'm going to do a couple of beers reviews tonight. And none of them are going to be from craft breweries. Woohoo! Is that dirty? Or is it my right? Am I right? Am I am I right? Still, we're just having the looks a bit blurry. I have to clean the the lens again. I don't know if I get dirty fingers or I keep touching my lens. I don't know. It always looks professional when somebody goes, ooh. Is that any better? I don't know. Anyway. So the first one we're going to do is from the Witchford Brewery. And it's a fire catcher, golden beer. I've not tried this. I've tried most things from the Witchwood Brewery. And uh, my kind of sense of Witchwood Brewery is it's a mainstream. It's owned by Marsons. It's, uh, it's a mainstream kind of brewery now, based in Oxfordshire. And uh, they make okay beers for the price it comes down to that i mean i'm not going to say they're brilliant beers but i'm not going to say they're bad beers either my view is the good kind of average beers for the money simple as that right so there's a bit of spill on the back and it says fire catcher is pale crisp and lightly aromatic fire catcher brings together the best of british barley and wheat warming hints of Honeyed nectar, spark with intense and sharp gooseberry flames for a light and pleasing quenching beer. Catch one and put the put out the fire. There we go. So it's only three and a half percent. It's five hundred mil, and if I remember rightly, it's roughly about one seventy a bottle. So shall we get it poured and see what it's like? Oh. Right, I'm so glad that so I was actually getting to kind of, I wasn't going to say depressed, but it's getting a bit down. I was getting really a bit sick of some of these uh, um, so-called craft beer stroke stouts, because uh, some of them were disappointing and others were just difficult to drink for lots of different reasons. And the main reason is it's just, None of them actually just want to say, well, let's see if we can make a proper stout that tastes like stout. No, they've all got to piss about and everything else. And it just, a lot of times it just does not work. And this is the problem. It doesn't work. And they still keep ramming it down your throat and keep pushing it on and everything else. You're thinking, are you trying to make a beer? Well, what the, what the hell are you trying to do? And it just, after a while, it just becomes tiresome it really was and it was getting tiresome and that's probably why i haven't done any of the, the craft beer the 12 days of christmas craft beer box i'll do one tomorrow but i'm quite happy just to have a break from it all because i want something more traditional something that basically tastes like a beer so let's try this one and see what this tastes like now like i said with Witchwood brewery um i don't have any messies I would say most of them are kind of hits to a certain degree. Um, in fact, I would say all of them are hits to a certain degree, just because if I compare them to mainstream piss water, they are generally a lot better. There you go, that's your uh, Instagram picture, nice and clear, nice and golden. And yeah, I look in the bases as they're in the same kind of uh, price range. If you look at the Ruby and the Golden Ale and everything else and the IPA, they're all kind of priced within that kind of uh, mainstream piss water kind of price range. And, uh, you know, roughly about £4, pound, £4.50 pound for a four pack. And to be totally honest, they're a lot nicer, a lot better from that point of view. If you basically put them up against kind of more established breweries and everything else, then yes, you're going to find them lacking a bit. But if you compare them to mainstream piss water, I mean, let's be totally honest, 
if I was going to go for a lager, I wouldn't. I'd probably go for something from the Witchwood Brewery. If I was going down that route and I wanted to spend that amount of money, I would go kind of round about these kind of houses because they're far better value because you're getting far better beer compared to the likes of Carling and all this other nonsense. So that's why I always turn around. It's relative to what they charge and everything else. And for what they charge, they're actually all right beers. They're, they're all right. They're pleasant enough. So let's see what this one smells like. Oh, get a little bit of hops, get a little bit of peppery coming there, a little bit of floral, not really getting any malts. So yes, hoppy, florally, slightly peppery tones. And that's it. So let's see what it tastes like. Well, there's floralness there to it. A little bit of sweetness, but in general, yeah, it's alright. If I looked at it in the basis as, would I rather have something like this, or would I rather have a lager from the main stream piss water kind of choices? Then I'd rather have this. If you look at it, would I rather have this over the kind of what we call, uh, how would you, hyped lagers? like Camden Hills and uh, Lost by Brewdog or what's this other one, Madre, that kind of nonsense. I would rather have something like this because there's more flavour to it, a bit more body to it, but just as refreshing. And obviously in the case of, like, say, Madre, Lost by Brewdog and, of course, Camden Hills, this is actually cheaper. So there you go. Or you're getting more for your money. So yeah. Right, let's break this down. Starting off, you're getting pale malts with a nice little kind of uh, malty sweetness. Little hints of floral, floralness in the front of the mouth. But little hints not full on. Obviously, it builds up in the mid tongue and starts giving you more florally kind of tones, more floral tones with the hops and a little bit of bitterness as well. But you still have this kind of uh, pale, malty sweetness accent just running right all the way along the kind of mid tongue as well. And then it moves into. Oh, let's really confirm this. Yeah. Moves into the, the aftertaste and there's a little bit of bitterness in the aftertaste. Not too strong, but it doesn't last that long either because it's superseded by this kind of multi sweetness that's still there, so it runs from front to back. You get a little bit of floralness as well in the aftertaste, a little accents, and that as it kind of dies down from the kind of uh, mid tongue. But yes, the the bitterness kind of overshoots into the kind of aftertaste and so it's like kind of floralness down down first in the aftertaste then of course you've got this kind of slightly kind of hoppy bitterness that's kind of light down down and then the last thing to dissipate in the aftertaste is the multi sweetness so you've got this nice multi sweetness to start with and you've just got this nice little multi sweetness to kind of finish and it just makes it just a nice nice pleasant easy oozy densely balanced beer I mean, the flavours, I'll be totally honest, they're not wonderful or groundbreaking or anything like that, but if you look at it for the price of the beer it is, and what it's marketed against and what it's competing with, in my view it's a better option than all these kind of overhyped laggers and uh, mainstream piss water, to be totally honest, and yeah, they're nice and refreshing. And yeah. It's just a nice, pleasant little beer. Um, what would I mark this out of 10? Well, I like this. This is a happy zone. This is where I like to be. Is reviewing a beer, thinking, my God, it tastes a beer. It's got a nice balance to it, as you can see. Quite nicely brewed, you know. And it just, how would you say? 
it's nice having beer that tastes of beer. It doesn't try to be anything. It's not. It's not overhyped. There's a wee bit of spill in the back, but again, just a little bit of cheekiness. Not nothing. Oh, this is great! It's wonderful. It's a legend. It's marvelous. Ha ha! Listen to all these flavors we've got. You know, all that kind of bollocks that. It doesn't try to be something it's not. It's a good, standard, average, run-of-the-mill ale that's refreshing, ticks the boxes for price, ticks the boxes for, yeah, quite nice, pleasant flavours, and ticks the boxes of just all-round kind of package that you can't really go wrong with. If you're working to a budget and things like that, my view is, is look around. Don't basically go for the mainstream pistol because they're a rip-off because you're just getting crap. Don't go for the overhyped laggers because that's what they are, overhyped and overpriced. You're paying for that hype and it's not going to improve what's actually in the bottle or the can or whatever format it comes in. So you're better off to go for something like these that are just kind of, they just kind of sit behind everything and just, you know, don't really say much and... They're always selling because people go there and think, oh, four pack of ruby, just over four quid, got one of them. Oh, golden eels, I say, got a four pack of them. And it's that type of thing, and I'll be totally honest, when the World Cup was on, I had quite a few four packs from the Witchwood Brewery um, of the ruby and the golden, and I'd have a couple of them watching the match, and they were fine. They were just perfect for that. I'm not looking for something with body and, oh, the quality, you know, I just want something that's just easy easy to drink. Um, got a bit of flavour there to keep it interesting. Refreshing. Just goes along with the football. Because at the end of the day, I'm concentrating the football. I'm not really concentrating so much in the beer. So I don't want something overly complicated or anything like that. And yeah, they just work from that point of view. There's other options as well that do the same. But Witchwood Brewery just seems to be easy to get everywhere. And there always seem to be that kind of similar price of roughly about four, between four and four pound fifty for a four pack. And it just works out quite well. So, out of ten, what would I give this? Well, for the price, and uh, it's only three and a half percent, so it's not big in alcohol in any way, shape or form, but... There's some nice flavours there for it. I mean, it doesn't taste weak. It doesn't taste as if, like, you're missing out. It doesn't taste as watery as mainstream piss water lagers, and they're basically supposed to be 4% and round about that type of stuff. Some are even now back up to 5% after they've been pissing about with the blooming alcohol contents back and forward over the years. Aye, I'm talking about Stella Artois. And just on that basis, for a 3.5% alcohol ale, there's more flavour to it than there is in the mainstream piss waters and uh, for only three and a half percent so it's definitely very sessionable from that point of view decent mouthfeel and yeah very easy easy to drink i could see me basically drinking this on a nice summer's day and just having a couple just to kind of refresh myself and it'd just be fine not a problem i'm not looking for anything complicated i'm not looking for groundbreaking beer every bloody time i open the fridge it's what we call moment fillers you know fridge fillers that type of stuff and yeah they just work so on that basis whereas a lot of the mainstream piss watches were kind of three and four this is a a good average beer so it would be around about a five but just because of the price and the availability and just overall kind of package i'm actually going to give this a six i'm going to give this a six out of ten just because it's a good fridge filler at different times of the year and they're good for if people coming around you want to be here there you go and you're not giving them you know the mainstream piss waters like the fosters or the carlings that there you go there's, there's a golden ale there or this one's a, a golden beer and uh, then of course you've got rubies and you know and you've got ipas and that i think the ip is just slightly a bit more expensive but hey that's the price of the hops you know it's the price you pay for hops but in general i find them Good fridge fillers, and uh, there's something a bit different than just the kind of standard mainstream piss water, water laggers and things like that. So, it's uh, 3.5%, it's 500ml, it's roughly about £1.70, £1.60, £1.70 a bottle, 
It's a 500ml bottle. It's 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Cheers and bye for now.